talk about camp. And uh, I'm going to pray one more time just to get us started. And then we will go through the parent packet that you have in your hands. We'll talk about forms. We'll talk about any questions that you have. Uh, and then we'll do something a little bit different from the end uh, that we've never done to camp in parent meeting before. But we'll see. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, um, we are anticipating, I am anticipating, we are anticipating that in a couple of weeks here, um, yeah, we know that fun is going to be had. We know that relationships are going to be built. We know that good food is going to be consumed. Um, th- these, are, these are givens, I feel like. Uh, we've been, this, this camp thing has been going on even longer since before I was here. Um, it is it is a process that is well tuned and well timed. We're so glad to be doing it again. Those things are going to happen, but we want to pray that your spirit moves. We want to pray that all of this, uh, those things are great. We want fun. We want relationships. We want good food. Um, we want to win a volleyball championship. Uh, but Lord Jesus, we want your your Holy Spirit to move. Holy Spirit, we want you to change lives and transform hearts and set students on a course to know you more intimately and to love you uh, more authentically with their lives and not just with their lips. Um, we, want folk, we want students who don't know you to come to know you. And uh, that's what we're here for, and that's what we pray for. We ask that you guide our time tonight, that it would be um, fruitful and helpful and we pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. So we have a parent packet in front of us. We are going to move uh, fairly quickly, page by page, through that document. I'm going to stop at the end of each page and at, call for questions. I have uh, a couple of ladies here tonight to answer specific types of questions. So if you ask a question and I hold my finger up and I point to one of them, then... That means that that's their area of expertise that they've taken over, and I'm going to defer to them. Otherwise, I'll answer your question. So, if I can, if I can, if I don't know the answer, then I'll be honest about that, and we'll try to figure it out together. So, uh, first page is the schedule. So, I'm not going to hit this super deep. Um, it's you can read it, you can read it, you can study it. Uh, I encourage you while we're gone, and we'll talk about this more at the end. Uh, I encourage it, you to use it as a, as a prayer guide throughout the day. Um, if, if our students are, you know, in our in-cabin Bible study, which that's different this year. I'll throw that out there for those of you who have either been to camp with us before or sent a student. Uh, in years past, we would have woken up, had breakfast, and then gone almost immediately, not too long after that, to the tabernacle, which is their worship center. We would have had morning worship, we would have had some teaching time, and then we would have broken into small groups. This year, they've switched it up a little bit. We'll go to breakfast, they'll have their quiet time, and then we will have an in-cabin Bible study slash small group time that we are sort of responsible for customizing. Um, and we will do that. <laughs> it covers the, uh, the material that we are studying as a, uh, as a camp for the week. It just dives a little bit deeper than what maybe um, Shane Pruitt, who's our, our camp speaker, if you were here a few weeks ago, back in May, uh, when Shane was here, he'll be our camp speaker. We're very excited about that. But, uh, but we'll take those, those studies, we'll talk about them uh, as, a, as, a, as a smaller group, as our church, and then we'll split up into even smaller groups to do some application questions. Uh, so if we're doing that, or we're in the morning worship service, or the teaching time, or at rec, great time to pray. <laughs> pray for hydration, pray for, for safety. Um, we, we don't have, I've been here, this is my third camp, right? Should have been my fourth, but it's not, it's my third. Um, but it's my third year, third camp. Um, we, we don't have just a rash of injuries, um, and we do do our very, very best to keep your students hydrated and well-fed, and, um, but you know, things happen, and so we pray that God would, would protect us and, uh, and be there with us. Um, and if we're in worship uh, at night, you know, pray for God to move. Um, but again, you can read that schedule. You can, um, you know, if you have any questions, does anybody have any questions about the schedule before we move on? Because this is not something that we need to 
spent a lot of time on together. How's the live stream going? Hi, live stream folks. If you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube or somewhere else, we are glad you're here. Um, welcome. So we'll move on. Uh, oh, on the, the front page on the schedule as well are emergency phone numbers. Uh, my number, Destiny, Destiny Rushing, who's my assistant, and Holly Murphy, who is our on-site nurse for the week. Uh, she wasn't able to be here tonight because she's on a cruise, a little jealous, uh, but that's okay. Monica uh, Cortez is here in her stead because she's also a nurse. She just doesn't get to be with us for the week. So next page, you have a packing list for camp. Uh, pretty standard stuff. Um, clothes for six days, all right, Monday through Saturday. Uh, they need to have clothes. I would say on that Monday through Friday, they need to have two sets of clothes, maybe three. Um, don't overpack, but just understand, uh, number one, it's hot and it's sweaty. We do give them a rec shirt, so they will have a shirt to wear out to the rec fields and sweat in, and then if they want to change back into whatever they're wearing at the beginning. But here's the thing. We can walk from our cabin to the tabernacle, and me personally, I'm soaked. So I try to change multiple times a day. We do not have a washer or a dryer in our cabin this year like we have in years past. Uh, so we can't really count on that for individuals' clothing. We have ways of getting the, the rec shirts washed, but we can't be washing and drying clothes. So make sure they bring plenty, plenty of clothes. We'll cover what kinds of clothes uh, further down the page. Uh, please have them bring a physical copy of the Bible. Um, if they don't own one and they just use their phone, I would be happy for us to provide one. Um, and we will bring some with us in case somebody forgets theirs or whatever. Here's why. Listen, uh, nine times out of ten when I'm in church or somewhere else, I'm reading the Bible on my phone. That's just what I do. Um, it's more comfortable for me. It's, I've adapted to it. It's just what I do. I use physical Bible for other things, especially when I preach. Um, but I know, like you know, that I can be on my Bible one minute, and then I can be somewhere else immediately after that. And it's not even malicious. It's not intentional. It's just it happens. Your mind wanders, your eyes wander, your fingers wander, and then you're flipping through social media when you should be on your Bible. So what we ask is, when we're in our small group time, when we're in our in-cabin worship time, when we're in, our, in the tabernacle, that they have a physical Bible in front of them and their phone is away. So, um, notepad to take notes with if they're going to do that, because, again, don't need the phone out. Uh, spending money. There, we do have a concession stand, a canteen, um, that they can go and buy uh, concessions from, ices, drinks, food, things like that. There is a gift shop. Uh, it is, in my opinion, rather pricey, but I'm kind of a cheapskate in those things. So uh, just know you send them 10 bucks, probably not going to go very far. So uh, T-shirts run more like $25, so, uh, which I think is a lot for a T-shirt. Uh, rec items, uh, we'll talk about shorts in a minute. Uh, closed-toed shoes, please have them bring at least one pair of closed-toed shoes for multiple reasons. It's just smart to have. Uh, swimsuit, we'll talk about that. Skateboard, if they bring a skateboard, they have to check in at the skate park, but they are welcome to bring their own skateboard. They can use that at the skate park throughout the week during free time. Uh, some of our students do really love to skate. Some of them like to do it as sort of a joke. They're, you know, they, they try to pretend to be skaters, but um, they can bring their own volleyball or basketball, but they do provide those for, for rec. Um, and if they want to fish, they can bring their fishing gear. So. Um, cabin items, pretty standard. Bedding, uh, I prefer like fitted sheets, probably a good idea. Pillow, blanket, uh, towels. Again, I would recommend two for the week because by midweek, that first one, you know, might be especially for our younger guys, might be getting a little funky. Just saying. Uh, yeah. Hygiene, <laughs> uh, hygiene products. Um, please do not bring shaving cream. I don't think we're, we're going to have a problem with this. I hope we're not going to have a problem with this. But if your kid doesn't need to shave, uh, please don't let, have them bring shaving cream. I'm going to go over this more with them, but we do not prank each other. We do not prank each other, not because, you know, the first prank is, is not fun and interesting and cute and ha, 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 ha. But that's not, that's not, it never stays there. Like, I've been there. It hasn't been that long since I was at camp. It never stops at one, because once you get one, then that person or people, they feel like they've got to get back. And then it just escalates, and then, you know, 
people's stuff is duct taped to the ceiling and they can't get it down, and or it's frozen in the underwear, frozen in the freezer. I'm just throwing out things that have happened. Not here, not at Hillcrest. That was at a previous church. But um, anyway, and sunscreen and bug spray. We'll have some if they want to bring their own, if they're allergic to something. I know we have at least one person who's allergic to sunscreen. They need a special kind. Have them bring their own. Dress code. This is everybody's favorite part. Um, I know it's my favorite part to talk about. Not. Uh, apparel may not display or promote tobacco or alcohol, controlled substances, inappropriate language or pictures. Very simple. Just no T-shirts with bad things on them. Just don't, don't wear them. Don't bring them. Uh, no apparel that exposes the midriff, right? So shirts need to go all the way down to whatever bottoms they are wearing. Uh, and in some cases, past that. We'll talk about that next. No extremely tight-fitting clothing, including but not limited to leggings, jeggings, skinny jeans, um, Spanx, compression shorts. Those are not pants. None of those are pants. They cannot be worn as pants. They should not be brought as pants. So please don't, yeah. Uh, shorts. This is the one everybody always has questions about. Must extend just beyond the fingertip length for guys. Because we've had this before at, at multiple camps. If I feel like one of the camp staffers who's a you know, 19-year-old kid who decides that they want to have some authority over something and I feel like they're in the wrong, then I'm going to have a, a nice, pleasant, loving, Christ-like conversation with them and try to stick up for our kids. But we need to make sure that we are following the rules so that I can do that. Um, and if somebody does come downstairs and we're headed out and I see that they're not in dress code, I'm going to send them back up, not because I don't like them, not because I'm mad at them, not because I want to be a hard case about this, but because I don't want them to have to go out there and have somebody send them back to go change because that's awkward and nobody likes that. So um, we're going to abide by their rules. No shorts or pants with writing on the back. Pretty simple. Dresses must include accessory wear under or over any straps that do not cover the shoulder. So anything that we wear needs to go all the way to the, sh the, the shoulder, right? No tank tops, no spaghetti straps, nothing like that. Um, dresses and skirts must be at the top of the knee or longer. Uh, that includes the slit on the side of the skirt. Uh, tank tops are not allowed. We just covered that. Everything must go to the shoulder. Sleeveless shirts are acceptable, but must go from the neck to the shoulder seam and not split down the sides, right? So some of our guys are fond of taking a shirt, cutting off the sleeves, cutting it all the way down the side so that we can see their nice, their firm abs that they've worked really, really hard on. Actually, the truth is, they probably, well, maybe some of them have, but some of them haven't because they just have good genes, and that's just how they grow. And I'm like, and I see what they eat, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I look at a piece of pizza, and I gain like five pounds. Anyway, sorry, I'm a little bitter. Uh, shoes and shirts must be worn at all times outside the cabin except when swimming. Uh, girls must wear dark T-shirts over their two-piece swimsuits. Uh, guys should not wear ever, 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 just my opinion, tight-fitting tight swimsuits. No Speedos? No Speedos, Mr. Ray, no Speedos. <laughs> Please, in the name of all that is holy and appropriate, uh, let's not wear Speedos. <laughs> Any questions about packing or dress code? Yes, Mr. Scott. For my wife, she'll take care of this. What size of bed do you is it twin or twin size, mattress. Twin size? regular twin? Okay, yeah, twin size about three or four inches thick. I know when we used to go to Mount Lebanon, it was twin extra long. These are just twin, so sorry for our tall people. Yes. So if our students go down to the rec field, and we have a girl, and you know when she left the cabin, she had those shorts pulled just to the right length because they went to her fingertips, and we didn't catch it. By the time she gets to the rec field, you know they're sitting back where they're actually supposed to be, and they're too short. They will send them back to the cabin, and that could mean if she's on a sand volleyball team or one of the other uh, teams that are playing that day, that can mean their team has to forfeit for that day. Like, right. they don't wait for you to get back. It's, you just keep going. And if all your players aren't there, then your team has to forfeit. So, I mean, the dress code, especially during rec time, is very critical. Right. And same for the 5K. If you get up, 
you know, super early like we have to for the 5K and you get out there and you're not and you have to come back and you miss it. Th these are the things that we're trying to avoid. Again, it's not um, just looking for things to get like, if I could go get through the entire week and never have to have this conversation, praise the Lord. Like we're not looking for this stuff. We're really just trying to, again, abide by the rules that are given to us, keep them out of those awkward situations, and um, help to cultivate just a healthy self-respect for them uh, and, their, and their bodies. That's guys and girls. Uh, because, you know, not to get off on a tangent here, they, they live in a world where their bodies are objectified. They are objects. And we're trying to reinforce the fact that they are persons and that their bodies don't ultimately belong to them uh, or anybody else until they're married. And so um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to be a parent today. So I, uh, I commiserate with you as my kids get closer and closer to being teenagers. Um, Anybody else? Dress code, packing, et cetera. No. Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. If um, you said that they can buy concession, can they bring some of their own snacks, or are they only allowed to buy? Yes, they're welcome to bring their own snacks. I, I cannot believe that I forgot to put that on there. So. Yeah, because I just don't I would just say, though, don't feel like they have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there are plenty, there's plenty of food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, free free to bring snacks, but it's definitely not required. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, if they didn't bring, if they never went to the concession stand, and your kid comes home and they said that they went hungry, and this is even if they do go to the concession stand, if your kid comes home from camp and says, "I was hungry," that's on. Because <laughs> we literally do. I missed it. We literally do shove food in their face at every opportunity. So. It's because it's hot and people just fall out. Any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Lewis. Uh, reusable water bottles. That's a good idea. It's a good idea. We, I mean, we'll provide, again, water will be accessible pretty much everywhere. Uh, there'll be water on the rec fields. But to have with them at all times, it's, it's a good idea. Huh, they do? Oh, it is? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I did not put that on the list. I'm glad that we covered that here. Yes, bring a water bottle. Make lots of trips to the ice machine on on camps on campsite. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Louis. On the snacks, if you send snacks with your kids and you send Cheetos and chips, it's about a 99.9% .9 chance that they're going to be in the bed and you know crunch. And we say no, no fooling around, no pranks. But we have food up in the cabin area where they sleep. 
it just goes there. Yeah. And there's yeah. no eating upstairs in the, where their beds are this year. So if they right. do take snacks, they'll have to bring it downstairs to eat it. Right. Need to include that when in that whole. Well, we'll cover the rules in just a minute. So. Good point, Mr. Lee. That comes from personal experience from having to <laughs> clean up uh, both midweek and at the end of the week. Because if you don't clean up midweek, then at the end of the week, it's a nightmare. So, any okay. other questions? So nothing that, um, the only way they can put stuff in the refrigerator or freezer is if it's like a dietary right. issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna we're not gonna store their ice cream or their sandwiches. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to rules. This is just informational for you. Um, maybe it'll set your mind at ease. I don't know. Maybe it's something you can just sort of reinforce with your kid if you think this, any of these are going to be a problem. Uh, we honestly, you know, again, this is my third camp. The first two, uh, you know, occasionally we'll have issues where we have to talk to somebody about something, and I'll cover the ones that tend to stand out more than, any, more than others. Uh, there's, not, there's not a rule that's here that doesn't have a story tied to it, doesn't have a reason tied to it. We don't just make up rules to make rules. Um, but again, we're also not there to just, you know, pound on them all week and admit, like, these are designed to keep them safe, to keep them focused, uh, and to help them meet Jesus uh, a little bit more clearly and, and, and better, and with a better experience. Uh, number one, be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Uh, we have a schedule. We will post that schedule. We will drill that schedule into them at every opportunity. Hey, this is where you're supposed to be. So we ask them to be on time so we know where they are at all times. So we don't, you know, uh, we don't have people just, you know, laying up in their beds when they should be at Tabernacle. We don't, that's, that's, that doesn't happen. We send counselors up. They clear the rooms. Everybody moves pretty much except for free time um, where we kind of split up. Um, we'll talk about buddy system in a minute. Um, we, we kind of move as a unit, as a group, and we keep track of people, and we don't, we don't lose people. But be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. That means that no guys get to go in the girls' sleeping area, no girls get to go in the guys' sleeping area. We say cabins. We used to have two cabins. And, but anyway, we have sleeping, different sleeping areas. We have a common area in the middle, but no, we call it no purple, right? Because blue and pink make purple, so no purple. Uh, at least... At least, and this is new this year, it used to be two, now we're making it three. Uh, at least three-person buddy system of the same gender, if you want to write that in to remind yourself. I didn't put that in there, I apologize. Uh, three-person buddy system at all times, okay? You don't go anywhere if you don't have two friends with you. Um, it can be more than that. You can pair off, you can have a set, two sets of two, and you guys can become four, and that's great. Um, but we, we keep track of each other. We, keep, we look out for each other. We, nobody wanders off by themselves. And nobody surely wanders off with somebody else um, that they might have a romantic interest in because that's not why we're here. And we'll cover that in rule number five. <laughs> um, no going into other church's cabins or any non-Hillcrest vehicle. So we have had situations in the past where students get invited. Hey, you should come into our cabin. Or where we're taking, we had you know, students take you know, video throughout the day or take pictures or whatever. And uh, for our, our late night thing, we're like, no, there's, there's, we can't. We can't account for you if you're in somebody else's cabin. So no doing that. And no, uh, we have vehicles that run around the camp throughout the day, especially during rec. They can ride on those. They don't need to be on anybody else's vehicle for any reason. Uh, disconnect to connect. Very simple. Uh, no phones out except during free time. That's the rule. Um, they can do it for a week. And free time is extensive. I mean, it's like four hours a day. So um, otherwise, we get into situations where... You know, and again, I'm guilty of this. You know, you're sitting around at, say, a meal or some other time, not this time, and just be automatically, a lot of us just automatically, just what's going on, what's going on. Those are great opportunities to connect with other students, with leaders, uh, for our leaders to intentionally engage with students and build relationships. And if we're all, and again, all doing this, then we've got, that, that can't happen. So we are going to ask them to put their phones away, except during free time. Uh, number three, respect others' property and person. Don't take what's not yours. Very simple. And we've had this rule. Like if they went to kids' camp, they had this rule. Uh, this, is, this is a rule. Don't steal. Uh, don't touch anyone in a way that you wouldn't touch an elderly relative. I didn't know a better way to say that. Appropriate touch only, right? Uh, and this goes cross-gender, and this goes among the same gender. Just don't do it, right? 
And because, and you know, you might think it's a joke, you might think it's funny, they may not think it's funny, you know? And like, just to be very serious and frank with you, they may have an experience in their past that that's going to bring back for them, and that's not okay for us to do ever. So, uh, again, side hugs, fine, you know? Uh, I would not recommend it because of what we'll talk about here at the end. Uh, try to recommend as much space in between folks as we can, but I understand. Here's, I was having this conversation with Destiny the other day. I've been to camp, I've served at camp, I know camp, and I know church. And I know one of the reasons that the pandemic was, and in some cases still is, so difficult for us is because we are wired for connection and we are wired for physical touch. Appropriate, loving, caring, physical touch. And without that, we, we, we wither and we, we tend to fade away in, in, inside. And uh, I know what it can mean to a kid who is pouring their heart out in a small group to have somebody just put their arm around their shoulder and pat them on the shoulder. It's a game changer, right? I don't want to tell kids, you can't do that. But anything past that um, is, is really just not, it's not appropriate. So um, no pranks or hazing of any kind will be tolerated, period. And uh, please shower regularly. You know, we'll, we'll toss that out to them. We'll enforce it as best we can. Again, by day two or three, <clears throat> it's rough. All right. Number four, dress appropriately. We already went over dress code. Uh, one thing that I added here that wasn't up in the dress code is that goes for the cabin common area as well. I know it's very tempting sometimes when we get into late night. You go to, you go to Tabernacle, yeah, you, you go to the, the canteen, you've been in the same clothes for like six hours, you're hot, you're sweaty. You just want to change into your bed clothes and then come down for, for late night. It's not okay because the things that some of us wear to bed are not within dress code. So uh, we ask that they stay in dress code everywhere except for in the sleeping areas uh, of the cabin. Number five, don't be a distraction slash respond in the spirit. And I, I stole that respond in the spirit from Miss Carrie, our children's minister. Here's what I mean by that. Every year um, there, is, there is this tendency... On, on many, on the, on the behalf of many students, to want to make it about them. And it's usually not even a conscious thing that's happening. But they have a, they have this romantic interest again. They have a friendship that's kind of on the rocks because it's day four and nobody's had any sleep and they're just mad at each other. Uh, maybe they're bringing something from home that they're really struggling with. Um, but they don't really want to talk about it. It's just sort of coming out in their actions. What we ask of folks is just to do your very best to not distract other people from their time with Jesus. Um, I understand, like I said, we're going to have, we're going to have kids who are dealing with stuff, and I, that's my first go-to. Like when I see a kid acting out, my first go-to is what's, what's going on inside and how can we address that? Um, but I also know that, that sometimes we can just kind of be jerks to each other and just draw attention to ourselves for no apparent reason. And uh, so I'm going to ask everybody to prayerfully consider how can, I, how can I keep my focus on Jesus throughout the week and not distract the person next to me um, so that they don't miss whatever it is God has to say uh, to them. So any questions about rules? And those are Hillcrest rules, but they, they follow very closely to the, the False Creek rules. They're just not quite as extensive. So say it, I tried to say it in a concise way. Okay, medications. How many of you have students who take either prescription or regular, regularly take over-the-counter meds? Raise your hand. Pre prescription or over-the-counter meds? Okay, so before you leave tonight, if you raise your hand, before you leave tonight, I need you to see me, and I need you to get one of these bright green forms. Because here's the medication policy, and I'll just read it to you so it's very clear. All medications. How many? All. All all medications, must be checked in with the Hillcrest medical personnel at the beginning of the week, along with a med schedule sheet that includes time and dosage. This goes, this includes, this goes for as needed medications like ibuprofen, Tylenol, Midol, etc. The only exception to this rule, so, so, so let me stop there. If your student has a prescription med, we need to check that in at the beginning of the week. It goes in a Ziploc baggie with this form, tells our nurse, how often they take it, how much they take, 
and we handle that. If you have a student who, again, rarely takes something else, um, even if it's as needed, we need that in our hands. We do not need medications in students' bags for two reasons. Uh, number one, I would like to say, and I think in nine times out of ten I can say this confidently, I trust your kid to be able to take ibuprofen you know, or something like that appropriately. Um, but if it's in their bag, then it's open to being taken by somebody else. We hope that doesn't happen, but it's there. And it's for our liability, and this is a Hillcrest-wide policy. This isn't just our policy. This is any time any group of, that takes minors somewhere, this is the policy. Um, I understand that you know, in some cases we're dealing with 17, 18-year-olds and that they're perfectly capable of that, and we are not trying to say that they're not. But this is a policy that we have to have in place for the safety of everybody involved. Um, and, and, yeah. So the only exception to that rule, if your child has a life-saving rescue medication, like an inhaler or insulin or an EpiPen, where if they don't have that on them, whenever the attack or, or the, the episode hits, uh, they will be allowed to have that with them. But they still need to check it in with a nurse, have a sheet, so that we know they have that with them. Any questions about that? And Monica will answer them. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, if I can't answer it, I'll defer to her. Is that, does that, um, our son doesn't take anything regularly, but like say he gets hurt or has a bad headache one day, is he able to go to the nurse and then get a towel or Okay. We have yes. a lot of things. That'd be and a drill. Okay. Yes. Um, all those basic meds that you would need, we will have a supply of all Okay. Yeah, we can, we can first aid with the best of them.